The Town of Los Gatos Planning Commission meeting of Wednesday, April 25, 2018 is now called to order. Mr. Paulson, will you call the roll? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Badami? Here. Commissioner Birch? Here. Commissioner O'Donnell? Here. Commissioner Janoff? Here. Commissioner Hansen? Here. Vice Chair Hudis? Here. And Chair Kane? Here. I would ask that everyone stand and join Commissioner Birch in pledging allegiance to the flag. The town of Los Gatos strongly encourages active participation in the public process, which are cornerstone of democracy and essential to the Planning Commission conducting its business on behalf of the town council and citizens of the town. There are several ways for members of the public to participate in the deliberations of the Planning Commission. Prior to a commission meeting, written comments concerning agenda items may be submitted to staff. They are always welcome and they are always helpful. At the meetings of the Commission, there are two opportunities for members of the public to participate. During the verbal communications period, an individual may speak on any topic not on the agenda, and any member of the public may speak during the public hearing of an item that is on the agenda. If you wish to address the Commission tonight during verbal communications or during the consideration of an agenda item, Please complete a speaker card located on the back of the benches where you are seated. Turn the card into a staff member and please print your name clearly so I don't mess it up. For anyone who intends to speak this evening, I ask that you come up to the podium, adjust the microphone that you speak directly into it, state your name and address for the record. In fairness for all who want to speak at this meeting, it is requested you limit your comments to three minutes. In addition to their service on the Planning Commission, members of the Commission serve on several town committees. Do we have any committee reports tonight? Vice Chair Hudis. Yes, thank you. We had a meeting earlier today of the Historic Preservation Committee, and uh, we considered several items. Uh, 223 Messall Avenue was back to us, I think, for the fourth time, and uh, we approved unanimously um, the minor development request. Uh, 223 Massall was also back um, for discussion about an accessory structure, and that was approved uh, three to one. And 128 Tate Avenue was uh, a minor development in historic district, and we approved with a modification to the windows uh, in the upper story. And lastly, 94 Hernandez was requesting preliminary review, which we gave feedback uh, to the applicant to work with staff. Thank you, Commissioner Hudis. Are there, are there other, God bless you. Are there other committee reports? Seeing none, I'll move to the verbal communications portion of our meeting. Members of the public are invited to address the commission on any item not on the agenda for tonight. And I have no cards for verbal communications. Moving along. Um, we, we move to the consent calendar uh, portion of the meeting. Items on consent may be acted on on a single motion, but before the Planning Commission acts on the consent calendar, any member of the public or the Commission may request that that item be removed. Tonight we have three items on consent. Number one, approval of the minutes of the April 11, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Number two, 320 Santa Rosa Drive, a CUP application U, 18001, requesting approval for construction of a vineyard on property zoned HR2 one half. This is APN 52755037. And item three, 212 and 216 North Santa Cruz Avenue, a CUP application U16001. This is a required six month review for, the, for an approved CUP for a new fitness studio with group exercise classes on property zoned C2. This is APN 5290485. Do we have a request to pull any of the items? Commissioner O'Donnell. Uh, I'm not requesting yet. I would ask you a question. It's probably obvious, but I'm, I'm missing it. 
Why is number two on the consent calendar? Number two is on the consent calendar because staff doesn't have any concerns with the proposal for a vineyard. And it requires, it requires the, our, our approval. You don't have any concerns. We don't hear anything about it. And that's why it's on the consent calendar? That's why we put things on the consent okay. calendar. Okay, well, I, I'll ask that it be taken off the consent calendar. Item two is removed. Any others? Vice Chair? Um, I'll just comment that I will be um, abstaining from uh, just orally on approval of the minutes as I missed the meeting and haven't had a chance to review the tape yet. All right. And Commissioner Hansen? Um, I need to recuse myself on item two. I'm, um, I live on the same street as the applicant, and I also sit on the um, board, Homeowners Association board. And item two is still on consent. No, it's pulled. Item two has been pulled. So you'll be excused when we get to that one. Okay. Commissioner Padami? I'm recusing myself from item number three as the project location is within 500 feet of my business location. Okay. I think that leaves just you and me, Tom. We got to. All right. So we have one item out, item number two. May I see a show of hands approving the consent calendar for items one and three? Thank you. So how do you want to proceed? you want to get right into number two? Yes, so O'Donnell? we would move on to item number two. Let, let me first say, I'm sure it's very simple. It's just that I would kind of like to hear a little bit more about it. I appreciate it. I had a report there. I just would feel better if you took, gave us a little report on it. So please. Just so staff does not have anything to add to the report. The applicant is requesting approval of a vineyard. Um, actually, the last vineyard that was on uh, the Planning Commission's calendar was actually on consent as well, but it was pulled by a member of the public. Um, and so that is why we put this one on consent. Uh, the applicant is here, and he will be making a presentation and be available to answer questions. And if you have any specific questions, um, then I'll be able to answer okay. those. Okay, again, I want to say I don't have any particular reason to argue with it being on consent. I just would like to hear a little bit about it, that's all. No, I, I agree with you, actually, because I remember two, three years ago, Commissioner Badami and I went up to see a, a vineyard, and I wondered, I asked the staff the same question, why is this on consent? Why did we go up? What I'm recalling is it was on consent, and it was pulled. And I guess that's why we went up. Okay. So, let's take a look at item number two. This is conditional use permit application U18001, 320 Santa Rosa Drive. Property owner applicant is Heron Clabeau, requesting approval for construction of a vineyard on property zoned HR2 and 1 half, APN 527-55037. Do we have a staff report? I have nothing additional to add other than what I just stated. Do commissioners have questions for staff? Is the applicant present? I'll call forward, I'll call up the applicant. Sir, you'll have uh, 10 minutes to address us and tell us about the project. Following that, the public will have an opportunity to speak to us. Following that, you'll have five minutes to add any additional comments. And I'll need a card, sir. You can do it after your presentation. Hi, is this on? Uh, my name is Howard Clabo. I'm the property owner at uh, 320 Santa Rosa Drive. Uh, this is Cody from Coastal Range Vineyards, who is working with me on the project. Um, he's available to answer any questions as well. Uh, this is a residential family vineyard, a small vineyard um, for production of wine just for our personal use. Um, there's no grading to the property that we're going to do. Um, there's no removal of any trees. Um, we will be, it's actually um, laid out in two phases. Um, phase one is a 7,000 square foot uh, vineyard, which um, we would be planting, you know, hopefully soon. And then we're requesting a smaller vineyard on another part of the property that we would do at a later time. Um, and, you know, it's it, all within the sort of the guidelines of the uh, hillside zoning. And that's, that's our request. When I visited the property, I saw you had construction, no vines, but construction getting ready for the vines. So as I looked off to my left. Yes. 
the additional property would be straight ahead to my right behind the house? Uh, yes, like on the other side of the house. There's nothing out there. At the Questions place. for the speaker? Well, then I guess I should say something. <laughs> I, I think it's an important thing. It sounds like a very good project. Sure. No objection to it. Sure. I just appreciate hearing from you. So Absolutely. I, no, happy to do it. And we've, we have worked, uh, you know, extensively with the Homeowners Association. Um, so we've done, Cody's worked with the Architectural Committee, uh, you know, to review the site, to look at all the things that we want to do. And they've given us their sort of uh, okay with the, with the project, so. Thank you. Let's see if we have any comments from the public. Just for one Yes, second. sir. Um, just to add to, to what Howard was, uh, to his description of the project, um, a couple of points that I think are important to consider. Um, or just to be aware of is there's no heavy machinery being used on the hillside. It's all by hand. Um, the root structures of these vines, once they're established, will provide um, an enhanced erosion control method um, that's non-existent right now on the hillside. Um, additionally, the hillside right now, as it exists, is a couple of uh, older olive trees and uh, light, flashy fuel load during the summertime from the natural grasses. And so this vineyard also serves as a fire break up the hillside for the entire community that's on the eastern side of, um, of Mr. Claybo's house. All right, thank you. Any comments from the public? Then I guess you have five more minutes to add anything. <laughs> I would love to tell you about the wine. It's gonna be really delicious. We're planning Chardonnay since nobody asked, but uh, no, nothing, nothing further. And, and you said it was for private use. Correct, yes. And if the CUP was approved. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just trying. Uh, of course, we, you will all be invited out for the first harvest. So Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll turn to the commission for questions, comments, or a motion. Commissioner O'Donnell. I'll just make a motion um, that we uh, approve the request. We'll find that the proposed project is categorically exempt, pursuant to Section 15304 of the California Environmental Quality Act. We make the findings as required by Section 292190 of the Town Code which is set forth in Exhibit 2. We would make the required finding that the vineyard is consistent with HDS and G and Hillside Specific Plan, also see Exhibit 2. And we would therefore approve the conditional use permit identified as U18001 with the conditions contained in Exhibit 3. Do I have a second? Commissioner Birch. I'll second. Any comment? I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. I opposed. Passes unanimously six to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can. We'll now move the public hearing portion of our agenda and consider item four, 17505 High Street, ANS application S17. 025. ANS application S17025. Property owner applicant Michael Sullivan requesting approval for construction of an addition greater than 100 square feet to an existing second story to exceed the maximum building height for single family residents and for site improvements requiring a grading permit on property zoned HR1. This is APN 532-23037. May I see a show of hands from commissioners who have been able to visit the site? May I show, see a show of hands of commissioners who were able to walk the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any disclosures? Thank you. Mr. Mullen, will you give us a staff report? Thank you, Chair Kane. Before you tonight is a request to construct an addition to an existing single family residence, including a residence height exception and site improvements requiring a grading permit in the hillside area at 17505 High Street. The subject property is located on the north side of High Street and is developed with an existing two story single family residence. The lot descends approximately 90 feet from the roadway with an average slope of 40%. The existing residence is a visible home because 25% or more of an elevation can be viewed, can be seen from two of the town's established viewing areas. 
The project is being forwarded to the Planning Commission with a request for several exceptions to the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines, including exceeding the height limitations for a visible home, grading exceeding maximum allowable fill depths, driveway slopes exceeding 15%, and development outside of the least restrictive development area. A detailed discussion of these exceptions is included in your staff report. Additionally, the staff report provides a summary of the review of the town's consulting architect and arborists. An addendum and desk item have been distributed to the commission, which include clarification on the building height changes, a project information sheet prepared by the Parks and Public Works Department, and additional public correspondence received after the publishing of the staff report. Based on the analysis provided in the staff report, staff recommends approval of the architecture and site application subject to the recommended conditions included in Exhibit 3. This concludes staff's presentation, and we are available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Hudis. Um, I just wanted to get clarification about uh, the below grade um, construction and whether I understand there's a, a new ordinance regarding below grade square footage and whether this is in compliance with it, although maybe it didn't have to be because the application was earlier than the ordinance. But in any case, it would be good to understand whether it's in compliance with the current ordinance. Thank you. This, the, the below grade square footage would meet the definition of below, below grade square footage contained in the new ordinance. Um, which is essentially the same language that was included in the former seller policy. Thank you. Other questions for staff? Commissioner Hansen. Um, I just wanted to ask one question, um, and it was about the, uh, con the um, consulting architect's report. And, and he didn't flag it as an issue, but he mentioned something about the tall walls, and then he concluded that it was it made unity with the house and whatnot. So I just wanted to ask the question, did staff have any, have any concerns about that at all? You didn't mention it in the report, but since he had mentioned it, he didn't make an issue out of it. I, I figured it wasn't, but just did it raise anything with you guys? Mr. Cannon's mentioning of the tall walls, I believe was in reference to the original plan that he saw. Very little changed from um, the first plan that he saw and what, you're, what is currently in front of you, except that the applicant went to great lengths to reduce the wall heights and terrace the walls to fit more with, along, to fit in with the, resident, or the hillside development standards and guidelines and to uh, be more in fitting with the site. So I believe Mr. Cannon was seeing some walls that were a little bit over height, um, but the applicant has reduced the size of those walls. So you're saying the the what the consulting architect saw was previous to what we're seeing today? It was slightly different. In in this case, he made a couple. He mentioned the walls, and then he made a couple recommendations regarding um, a, a glass or a translucent garage door, and um, it's slipping my mind the second issue. But both were um, addressed uh, to staff satisfaction, and in this case, they were those features were eliminated. The glass garage door was eliminated, and and we didn't. So it didn't warrant um, re-review by the consulting architect. All right, thank you. I had a similar concern on the translucent door or whatever it was. Um, as I understand it, the applicants agreed to make that out of some f form of wood? Correct, and the current plans reflect that. So there's no longer, the plans in front of you don't show a translucent door. It was the first or second iteration of the plans that Mr. Cannon reviewed. And um, as previously stated, the change, the applicant responded with a change that was very clear that he was eliminated. So he's complied with both of uh, Cannon's concerns. Excellent. Correct. Other questions for staff? Commissioner Birch. To clarify, you mentioned that one of the exceptions is the slope of the driveway, but they are actually improving the driveway, correct? Correct. The, the fire department has a standard to limit to 15 percent. So does the, um, the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines, but they do have variances in their in their terms to approve steeper driveways and in this case the fire department's reviewed it and approved uh, this iteration of the plans and just for clarification the existing driveway slope is 33 percent and the proposed driveway slope is 20 so they are improving that situation other questions for staff i'll open the public portion of the public hearing and give the applicant up to 10 minutes to address the commission who will be speaking for the applicant I'm going to guess it's the applicant. Good 
Excellent. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Michael Sullivan, and I live at 17505 High Street. Uh, we're very excited to be here this evening. We've been working with staff for just about a year now on this project, and they've done a terrific job guiding us through this process. The staff report was very thorough, so we just have a brief presentation for you this evening uh, to discuss the highlights of our project, as well as to discuss our community outreach. The existing home was built in 1964, and it's pretty much in original condition, so it's a bit functionally obsolescent now. Um, it's essentially a two-bedroom home that lacks insulation and drywall, so when we turn on our AC, we start immediately cooling the valley. The property can only be accessed from the 35% slope, as a lot of you noticed when you were out there, um, with the most prominent feature being the A-frame that's at the front of the elevation facing the valley. Um, and so removing that is going to make a, a quite a significant improvement. Um, all of this provides us an excellent opportunity to improve the property and bring the property more in conformance with uh, today's standards. As we've talked about the driveway, so that's, that's taking it from 33% down to 20. Um, our new conditions will require and we'll be building a new fire sprinkler system with the entirety of the house. So it's going to be a big improvement as well as new exterior fire rated materials uh, for construction. We're also placing the addition immediately adjacent to the existing house, and we're building that back into the hillside just a little bit. And so it's an existing flat pad that we're not having to grade, and it's heavily forested around the addition, so it's really actually screened very quite well. We're also replacing all of the failing retaining walls that are throughout the property. We're gonna be upgrading the home to include features such as solar, high efficiency appliances, insulation, and windows as well. We're enclosing the carport, so we'll have a full functional two-car garage. In addition, we're going to be widening High Street, so we're kind of excited about that. That's something neighbors have um, appreciated as well because it's a little narrow where we've got parking as well as the, uh, the road there. So we're going to be widening that and building new retaining walls along High Street as well, so that's going to help reinforce the public street. So we're excited to be able to bring that benefit to the community. Um, we've talked a lot about reducing the height, but basically what that is is we're pulling the A-frame off. We're pulling the massing there for the roof back five feet into the hillside, so we're bringing the full second floor back five feet, which is effectively lowering the, the profile of the home by about seven feet. So to the greatest extent possible, we've been working with staff to really make sure that our plans are in compliance with hillside design guide, guidelines, excuse me, as well as uh, town ordinances. Uh, just a moment on our community outreach. We began that outreach early in 2017, meeting with all, our, all of our neighbors, showing them our plans. They've evolved over, of course, that year, and we've kept them updated as well. So um, we have about 20 letters of support, and to this date, we've not received any um, concerns with our plans. With that, I'm going to yield just a few minutes to my partner, Teresa, and then um, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Good evening, my name is Teresa Wellington and I live at 17505 High Street. I'd like to express what a pleasure it's been working on this project. Um, we've really come a long way over the last year and a half through various meetings with the town and with our neighbors. And we've really, really strived to create a home that will blend with our community and respects the hillside design guidelines to the greatest extent possible. We absolutely love living in Los Gatos, and this project has been a really fantastic opportunity to meet more of our neighbors and really get to know them. I've been very encouraged by the support and the kindness that we've received along the way. So with that, we thank you for considering our application this evening, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do we have any preliminary questions for either one of the speakers? Commissioner Badami. You mentioned um, during your presentation that no concerns with your plans have been communicated to you as of this date, but we do have a letter from a W.B. Ricks um, that's our Exhibit 12, and he says he's not comfortable with the easement. Yeah, like you know, that's, that? um, you have a great eye and you were able to catch something there that um, I'm, I'm happy you asked about. So um, originally we were looking at a slightly alternative approach for our driveway. Because of the fact that it's a, a steep driveway, we, we looked at a, a few different approaches, and some of those involved working with our neighbor. What we ultimately decided to do working with them was to um, tier the retaining wall, as you see, instead of having one large retaining wall, and have it go through their property, which would have required an easement. So they were 
they're, they're supportive of the project. They were great working with us through that process, but we did change gears just a little bit to the new layout that you see with the driveway. Um, so it is my understanding that they're in support of the project. I know they're here tonight, so I'm sure you'll be able to have a chance to hear from them. Commissioner Badami, I had a similar reaction to the letter. It's dated uh, 2017, and so they've had a lot of time to fix it, and the parties are now happy, and it's a moot point, but it's still a good catch. Great catch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Other questions? Vice Chair Hudis. Um I had two questions. Um, one was with regard to the, the driveway. And um, while it's, it's definitely a benefit that the slope is being reduced from the existing, it still is a non-compliant situation, so we have to have some findings about that. So I just want to ask you whether you considered other alternatives that would eliminate that steep grade of the driveway. I mean, I'm not sure how you get from point A to point B without that, but uh, did you, for instance, look at putting the garage on a different level or other things uh, that might have been considered to eliminate that? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and it's a question I asked my civil engineer many, many times to the point where um, I just got no mic. <laughs> we can't do it anymore. So what, what we were able to do is get it to the greatest extent possible to um, 20 percent and it was really a struggle to get there and it's part of the reason we have a little bit more grading is because we're um, we're having to reconfigure it a lot to get it there um, we did even look just as you mentioned about trying to bring the garage up but that would have required a lot more grading a lot more structural work up on the hillside and we probably a lot more cost as well so um, that was an idea that we decided not to pursue vice chair um, so the other question I had, which may work against the first one, um, was regard to trees. So um, there's a tree, which is oak number 16 on the uh, town arborist report, and I think it's number 18 on your site plan um, on sheet C1. Uh, it's a coast oak. It's not particularly large, but it's one of the few coast oaks in that part of the uh, uh, coastal oaks on that part of the property. So I was wondering if you had looked into retaining that particular tree, uh, number 18. It's currently outside of the driveway. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you for that. Tree 16 is a tree that I actually think we can retain. Um, it's one we studied several times, and our arborist was a little bit nervous about it um, just because of the proximity where we'll be doing our work. But they typically do hold up quite well during construction, and you know it's a it's a tree that can withstand a little bit more, and so um, we'll do our best to retain tree 16. I know that our neighbor would appreciate that as well. So we'll see if we can keep that one. Tree 18 is um, because of the fact that we really did need to get more run in order to more gradually bring our driveway down. Um, we needed to pull it out to the north a little bit, and so by doing that, we pulled it right into tree 18. And so unfortunately, that tree, um, if we removed, if we maintained or kept that tree, we would be having a, probably a steeper driveway as a result. So it's a trade-off with the slope It's a little of the bit driveway. of a trade-off there, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I'll now invite comments from members of the public. If you've not already turned in a speaker card, please do so at this time. When you call to speak, remember to state your name and address for the record, adjust the microphone, and you'll have three minutes. The yellow light will come on indicating you have 30 seconds left. You're not done. When the red light comes on, you're done. So, Jeff Funston. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff Funston. I live at uh, 17440 High Street. Um, we've... Uh, I lived there, raised my kids there. I've bought the property in 1985, rented it for um, about five years till about around, right when the earthquake happened. And uh, that, the reason for that is because my wife wouldn't live there. It was, a, it was a house built like a deck. You know, that's what the foundation was, pier blocks. So I loved the property, but, you know, there, she wasn't going to live there. So we, we rebuilt. Um, went through the whole planning process and uh, and finally you know we got to rebuild uh, I think 90 so I know what Mike's going through 
And uh, that's why I'm here, just to support him. I know how difficult it is to go through all the process. And uh, I think it'll be a great addition to the neighborhood, for sure. I know his house is similar to what I had to tear down. And, uh, you know, they're just not really livable anymore. Unless, it, you know, it's not a Victorian, it's not a s historical piece of property, you know, house. So that's, I'm just here to support. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you, sir. Taylor Stumpf. Good evening. My name is Taylor Stump. I live at 159 College Ave. Um, also here in support, myself being a recent newbie to the town of Los Gatos, it's, it's nice to see young blood come into a new place, revitalize, modernize, and uh, just looking at the plans of what Mike and Teresa have done, I think look exceptional. I think uh, myself living on the hillside and a bunch of trees, fireproofing and fire safing, are extremely important. Um, myself being in energy, uh, I can appreciate the energy efficiency and I think what they're bringing is going to improve the appearance of the hillside um, as well as the community, which largely is in support of what you guys have been doing here in this room a long time before I've come here. So uh, just again, wanted to express my, uh, uh, my support, so thank you. Thank you, questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Ming Lee. Ming Liu and uh, 17520 High Street. I'm here to support Mike and Theresa's project. And uh, um, they have been communicating with us uh, with their pr plan and project reviewed in person with my husband and I. And uh, so, um, being their uphill neighbor, and I, we, don't, we don't see any uh, problem with their construction, and there is no interference with uh, anything that, whether it be our view or our access to our property or enjoy our property, so we're here to support them. Thank you. Questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Clay Cougar? I'm Clay Cougar, Ming's husband. We both live at uh, 17520 Hyde Street, which is just up the, the hill from Mike. Um, I really like what he's doing with the house, with the new sight lines. I think it's gonna be a great addition to the neighborhood. Owning a full-size three-quarter ton pickup, I also greatly appreciate uh, widening out the street to provide you know, not only more parking, but also for getting around traffic, because that section is actually pretty narrow and there's only a couple of places to get by. So I'm in full support of uh, his changes. Thank you, any questions for the speaker? How much is he gonna, how long is he going to widen, do you know? It's what, two, about two car links? Three? See if you can get him to do the whole street when you, because it's, it would really help. Well, yeah, I'd also like cable while you're at it, and natural gas. Thank you, I'm good. Thank you. Kaylin Rodriguez. Thank you for letting me speak. So my husband and I have lived in Los Gatos for the past several years now, and I've had the pleasure of seeing Michael's house, and I think it'd be a great improvement to the community, and it'll bring value. I've seen the driveway, <laughs> and I've drove through it, so that's something I'm really excited about when I come to visit, to keep safety in mind, especially with the fire trucks. So I appreciate that a lot, especially keeping safety in mind, and I'm looking forward to seeing the completed project. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Thank you. Debbie Ricks. Hi, I'm Debbie Ricks, and we live at 17480 High Street, right below the project. My husband, Bill, is here with me tonight, too, and we're here in full support of the project. We've lived at our home since 1979 
and lived next door to the people that, that Mike and Teresa purchased from that entire time. And so obviously it's going to be change for us. Um, but we are we're very excited about their plans. They've been in complete con um, communication with us from the very beginning. And that's been, that's been very helpful. And um, taking a look at, we did talk to the planner, and taking a look at the, at the plans and looking at the way that it, it is constructed so that it's back away. We won't see any of the new any of the new construction, maybe a little bit where the driveway is. But the retaining walls, too, that I believe they were referencing before, too, are not, we're directly below, and that's not a problem for us. Because we, there's plenty of room to do, to do plantings, like on our, our property on, on that part. Um, it will be different because they're having a swimming pool. And before, there were just orchards and things like that. But it's, like somebody else said previously, I think it's, definite Im improvement and modernization, and we know we'll have a very fire-safe home above us, and um, we're, we're here in full support. Thank you. Questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Oh, dear. Uh, somebody's trying to trick me. Coffee? Feckberg? Somebody was trying to trick me. All right. But no. Come on down. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. Hi, my name's Kurt Felberg. I'm one of the architects that worked on this project with Mike and Teresa. Um, and so I'm just here to answer questions. I don't want to. You know, we're getting some great feedback from the neighbors, so we think it's a great project. So if there's any questions for us at the end, we're here to support it and talk about it. So, Any questions for the speaker? We may, we may see you later. Thank you. Lori Felberg. Lori Felberg, uh, senior principal with Dolan Group Architecture Planning, and uh, we are the architects for the project. I just want to say how great it's been working with um, your staff and with Larry Cannon on this to really make this a, a great house for the neighborhood. So we're here to answer questions, and we appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paul Tersini. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Paul Tresini. I live at 121 Summerwood Drive in Los Gatos. I've been a 60-year resident of Los Gatos. I know that probably find that hard to believe because I look so young, but um, I've been here for a while. Um, I'm in complete support of this project. Michael and Teresa have been great in the um, outreach that they've done. They've shared their plans. Um, I see great improvement to the area. Um, I, like everybody else, like that they're going to improve the property with the fire sprinklers and with safety in mind, and I think it'll be a beautiful addition to the neighborhood. And I'm in complete support. Thank you. Questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. Nothing about my age or anything? I'm good. <laughs> Steve Howard. Hi, my, mind, my name is Steve Howard. I'm uh, Mike and Teresa's neighbor. I live at 17460 High Street. Um, I'm actually familiar with the house. I did some work on it about 20 years ago, and uh, the house definitely needs renovation. I think it, the work that uh, Mike's proposing to do in the house is a great addition to the neighborhood, and I'm in full support of it. Um, I think it will fit the neighborhood really well, and I think it's a beautiful architecture home. So I'm in full support of it. Thank you. Questions for the speaker? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. I have no other cards, so we will now give five minutes to the applicant to rebut any of the terrible things he's just heard. Thank you very much. I don't think I have anything further to add or clarify, but again, happy to take any questions you may have. Questions for the speaker? 
Commissioner Janoff. I just have to ask. Um, your outreach to your neighbors is commendable. It's something that we don't always hear. Um, being so thorough, were there any changes that anybody requested of you that you made, or was it project basically perfect from the start? Thank you for that question. We, um, you know, probably where we spent the most amount of time, to be honest, is with regard to the driveway, and and really in anticipation of even this night trying to make it the best driveway we could. Um, you know, rolling the garage, the um, garbage bins and recycle bins up that driveway is quite a feat. So, you know, we we're, we're looking to make an improvement there. And that was something, of course, we worked with our neighbors on as well. So that was that was primarily where we spent our time. Um, we didn't have a lot of concerns from neighbors. Well, I would, again, just have to commend you for that, uh, yep. that outreach. It's, it's exceptional. Thank you. Just one quick question also on the trees. Um, I was looking at the consulting arborist report and, and I think you t um, talked to Commissioner Hedis about uh, tree 18, but um, the consulting arborist report did mention a couple of other trees, 47 and 14, that um, because of the retaining walls or things where things were gonna be, that they might be in conflict with the plants. Now, I, I, we've had this happen before where there was a timing issue. Um, what I, all I wanted to know is, if you've looked at the um, the consulting arborist report and if you've discussed those trees and how they fit with the plants. Yeah, so tree 47 is is one of our favorite trees on the property. And it, it does a lot of the screening there because it's such a beautiful, large tree that's been there for quite some time. Um, we, we did quite a bit of work to make sure that we increased the tree protection zone for that particular tree. For example, there's an existing wood retaining wall that of course is also failing, and that is about four feet off of the tree. So we're actually gonna remove that very carefully and we're gonna build a new retaining wall, but we're gonna be about eight feet off of the tree. So we're actually gonna be giving this tree more breathing room and we'll be very careful to make sure that that tree um, actually flourishes. It's gonna be better off once we're done, I think. Okay. And then tree, the other was, tree number. The other one he mentioned is 14. So the question with tree 14 is whether there was discussion about trying to keep that? He, he, it was on the list to be kept. What he was saying was that he wondered if, if oh, I see. Because where we, if new retaining walls or whatever, if it was gonna um, have a detrimental impact to the trees. And, and if so, you know, is there a workaround or is there gonna be adequate tree, tree protection? I, I'm, I'm, I'm interpolating what he said, but he, he just flagged those That's as right. ones. That's right. That, that were on the list to keep that might be an issue. So subsequent to that comment, we decided to eliminate tree 14. So we, we did take the advice on that. We're showing that for removal. Um, it's, it's probably not the best tree for its current context and everything. So um, we're, we're planning to remove that tree now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thanks so much. I'll now close the public portion of the public hearing and ask if any commissioners have questions for staff, wish to comment on the application, or make a motion. Commissioner Hansen. I just wanted to confirm with staff, in reading through everything, it, um, my general sense was that um, on every point where there was a um, deviation from the hillside, um, design guidelines and standards that there was going to be an improvement from where the house is today to where it will be um, maybe with the exception of the the fill but um, but it looked like that so did I read that right it seemed like you know across the board and by the way I wanted to compliment staff on the excellent staff report it was very very detailed and thorough thank you I think um, you're you're correct in that there's four exceptions being requested and um, where he's and, and those reflect the deviations from the hillside development standards and guidelines and I think uh, in most cases it is an improvement um, including you know to the house it's reducing visibility and with the driveway there's an exception for fill to obviously increase safety so I, I think you're correct on that okay thank you questions comment Commissioner Badami I have a comment and uh, I'm gonna try a motion so for me, um, I see this, as you stated, an improvement over the existing structure. 
the applicant, to me, has provided compelling reasons and evidence to support granting of the exceptions to the hillside design standards and guidelines. So I would move to approve architecture and site application S-17-025, requesting approval for construction of an addition greater than 100 square feet to an existing second story and to exceed the maximum building height for a single family residence and for site improvements, requiring a grading permit on property zoned HR1, and I can make the findings per exhibit two. Is there a second? Commissioner Birch. I will second. Any discussion? I have some discussion. Um, I want to, before we vote and then it's over, I want to thank everyone who's come down and want to thank everyone who wrote letters. I recognize many of the names because you sent letters. That's very helpful um, and very much appreciated. And I'll reiterate what was said. Staff did a great job. The Sullivan and partner have been very cooperative, um, respecting the Hillside guidelines. Um, this may influence the obvious vote, but I think it's a poster child for how to do things right. So thank you very much. Other comment? Commissioner Hodes. Yeah, I, I also appreciate the uh, exemplary public outreach um, on a project. And I just wanted to explain that it's important for us um, because there are exceptions that are being requested. And so um, while people may feel they were saying the same thing, it was important for us to hear that. So I want to thank you and the folks who came out. Just for the record, we don't, <laughs> Commissioner, I don't like to give exceptions. LRDA, height, that sort of thing. But as was mentioned by staff, and this for the record, that, that the exceptions being requested were improvements on what was being there. Nobody's asking to make the house 10 feet taller. Uh, what they're asking for is reduce the height of the house. So as Commissioner O'Donnell would say, there's plenty of room here for discretion. Further comment? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed? Passes unanimously, seven to zero. Thank you. Mr. Paulson, are there appeal rights to this matter? There are appeal rights. Anyone who's not satisfied with the decision of the Planning Commission can appeal that decision to the Town Council. Forms are available in the Clerk's Office. There's a fee for filing the appeal, and the appeal must be filed within 10 days. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break, five minutes, which is usually 10, and then we'll resume with other matters. Thank you.
I will reconvene the meeting. We move to the other business portion of our hearings and consider item five, which is a draft proposed capital improvement program for fiscal years 2018-19 to 22-23. Mr. Paulson, do you wish to comment before I turn to the commissioners? I don't have anything to add. Mr. Morley is here this evening and will be available to provide a brief presentation and answer any questions. Mr. Morley, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Matt Morley, Director of Parks and Public Works. Uh, as you see in your packet, you have before you a, a memo and our capital five-year capital improvement program. Uh, the important part of this is uh, looking at it from a CEQA perspective and then also um, alignment with the general plan and uh, various sp specific plans. And you have that in your memo as a recommendation. I thought I'd take us through some of the highlights of the projects just because um, capital program is such a fun thing to work with. So. Uh, wanted to hit some of them, and, and these all are uh, have an element that aligns with our general plan, especially. So um, we'll go go through them quickly. Uh, the big one that's been ongoing is Almond Grove project. Uh, we are in the second year of uh, paving streets there, uh, and we'll be doing uh, significant work along uh, Tate and Masal this summer, uh, and we'll be expecting completion next year. So a ni nice project, and the, sheep, uh, the streets are shaping up nicely in the Almond Grove area. If you haven't had a chance to walk, walk it, it's a good opportunity to see sort of the before and afters and, and what a great project that is. We're doing a number of safety improvements, especially around cr crosswalk improvements. We have some improvements at Blossom Hill Road in North Santa Cruz and Las Gales Almaden Road in Cherry Blossom. Um, big, big areas where we have lots of attention, especially with uh, school kids that are cro make, making those crossings. Um, and we're doing uh, some some uh, intelligent traffic signal upgrades. So we have a smart signal program. The best part about this is we have grant funding that we've been adding to this project. So um, we, we continue to cobble together dollars so that the town investment is less and other people's money is the main source of funding for this one. Uh, this has been brought to us largely by the addition of a transportation mobility manager that the council uh, added to our budget for the last year. Uh, and I'm happy to say that um, our transportation mobility manager has already brought in over a million dollars in grant funding uh, since, since she started. So a great progress and a great, great move to put us in position to fund ongoing capital projects. Obviously, cut through traffic is an ongoing issue for us this summer. We're managing expectations and doing a lot of work on uh, trying not to move the problem around, but to address it where it's at. So we'll be focusing on uh, managing uh, the Almond Grove area where we get uh, tra effect, impacted by traffic on an annual basis, and we will not be doing the closure at Wood Road. We have some latitude to be able to do some adjustments on closures uh, entering into the Almond Grove area to help protect that area. But again, we want to avoid shifting the problem. On the park side, um, we had some uh, town staff who attended a, a Parks and Rec um, seminar over the last month or so, uh, and one of our uh, more fit employees entered a competition and was successful in winning that competition, uh, and out of that, um, the town is receiving a $30,000 piece of um, parkour sort of exercise equipment that we'll be placing in one of our parks, so that's in our capital project. Uh, so it's an interesting little oh, please. twist. Pray tell who and what. Uh, <laughs> it was our town attorney, Rob Schultz. <laughs> should say, he does a mean push-up. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the area of emergency preparedness, we have a number, of, a number of good projects with a major focus on emergency preparedness this year, including upgrades to our uh, emergency op um, operations center communications uh, equipment. Uh, continued efforts on our interoperability, which is a radio program to make sure that we can talk to other jurisdictions without talking over each other. Uh, we have an IT disaster recovery program where we're uh, putting ourselves in a position to be able to uh, retain our important files uh, over, uh, even through a, a disaster or hack of other, uh, or other sorts. And significant work on neighborhood emergency preparedness where we're, we're looking to take advantage of our CERT teams uh, and provide more neighborhood, get more neighborhood involvement in being prepared for emergencies uh, to take on uh, those situations, make sure the training's in place, and make sure we're outfitted with emergency equipment at, a neighborhood, location, at neighborhood locations. Uh, and then I wanted to hit a couple of the big projects. Those are really the fun ones. Uh, we are continuing to work on a Highway 9 connector to the Las Gatos Creek Trail. 
This is another one that our transportation and mobility manager is working on to bring additional dollars to the town. So we'll be starting the early phases of design on that one to get it to a shovel-ready project. Shovel-ready is a key word because once we get there, um, it becomes much easier to get other funding. Uh, and that's where we want to be with our project. So we want to get to that shovel-ready spot so that people, uh, other uh, agencies are, are encouraged to fund, help us fund those construction projects. We've added a new big project, uh, widening um, the bridge on Blossom Hill Road or adding a pedestrian bridge. We haven't quite got there yet. We're going to do the initial study to determine what the best alignment is, and that will be taking place this year. Again, this is position positioning the town for future uh, dollars, and this one we're targeting Measure B as a potential source uh, to be able to fund uh, additional ped crossings there. And we're also working at, uh, on a council priority uh, to take a look at a pilot for busing uh, uh, school kids to, to school and, and home in the afternoon. We've been doing significant outreach to the community, and we'll be bringing back a report to the, uh, to the council in early June to talk to them about the feasibility of this, what it looks like, what the funding requirements are, uh, and um, looks like we have very high levels of interest with this project uh, in, uh, from, from the community, so I'm anxious to um, continue to move that one forward. Uh, specific to the downtown, we've got a couple big things going on. One is a one-way street pilot program. So we're going to turn uh, North Santa Cruz into a one-way street uh, and take a look at how that looks over a, um, a, a sort of a semi-extended period of time of a couple months um, and see uh, what that impact has to other streets in the neighborhoods uh, and how that affects the downtown businesses. We want to really take a look at that for the future of the downtown. And we'll also be undertaking sort of concurrently a downtown parking study. So we look at the parking demands in the downtown um, and, and the greater downtown area, including areas around the high school. Uh, and that's to try, try and take a hol holistic look at our parking challenges. And so I'll leave it at that. That's just a summary of some of the projects. Um, obviously, you have the, uh, the draft CIP in your packet. And of course, we're here to support the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Morley. And I should have done this while we still had an audience, but for the many people watching at home, this, this is the um, Capital Improvement Program. Uh, it is a marvelous piece of work. Um, if you have the time to read it, it's so informative about what's going on in town. Um, commissioners and committee members and anyone interested, uh, it's like reading Our Town in Micro Detail. Outstanding report. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Morley. Commissioner O'Donnell. Just a, uh, it's a kind of a personal question. When you are going to open the access to uh, Santa Cruz, uh, as opposed to the way what you've done in the last few years, uh, I live uh, right by the high school. And sometimes if I come back from courtside or something and I'm coming down university, everything just stops because the right turn on, I don't go right on uh, at university in Maine, I go left. But everybody going right, one has to wait for the pedestrians to cross the street. Uh, two, all the traffic in front of them is stopped. So you can sit there through multiple lights and go nowhere. I have parked my car far distant from where I'm going and walked across the bridge to get back to my, my place. And what you're doing this summer, it sounds to me, is going to make university uh, a non-functioning street. So I'm wondering if you have any plans uh, to grow potatoes there. What, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> Uh, thank you. That's a, a, a great question. And we, we are anticipating that we will um, revisit some congestion, some extreme congestion in the downtown, especially on the heaviest of days. We're going to do a lot of outreach to the community. I think it's important that we know for, for uh, the weekends, so, so a, a, a sort of a finite number of days, and really between the hours of 10 and 2 on, on the weekend days, that we pay attention to, to where we're headed, uh, and we look for alternative uh, means of getting from uh, point A to point B, if we're, especially if we're in and around the downtown, that we take the opportunity to walk and to bike, use our downtown businesses uh, in that way, uh, and really support, support the community from that perspective, and look you, at some you, planning you, opportunities. Would it, would it, mm -hmm. I, I assume you've already considered this, but I haven't, so I just asked the question. I've often wondered if you had uh, a traffic control officer at some of those intersections, where the intelligence is able to be used as opposed to just this poor signal up there that doesn't understand really what's going on. Uh, so have you looked into using traffic control officers? Yeah, so we, we have looked. We've even used them in the past, especially at Maine and Santa Cruz, where we, we, we uh, tried them early on in, in our experiences. What we found is um, the, the congestion is so bad that they have nowhere to move the cars to. So we're, st we're stacked up uh, on North Santa Cruz all the way to Main Street. 
Uh, and so the officers en end up not being able to move the cars anywhere, and, and it, it doesn't really help the situation, and, and it can be frustrating to, uh, to those in their vehicles because uh, the, it looks like the, the, the officers have, have nothing that they're able to do. So it's certainly something that, that we've looked at. We are completely open to ideas, and we'll continue to explore opportunities to, to provide Grant relief. Road closure got rid of that problem. So there must be, I, yeah. I, I assume the decision here doesn't relate to the effectiveness uh, of that closure for the immediate area, but it must relate to the more distant areas? Yeah, so I think, that, as I mentioned, we, what we found was we were really shifting and chasing the problem. So every time we made a, a change in one location, we chased it to a different location in, in town. Uh, and, and the apps are just a little bit quicker than we are to mobilize and put road closures in place and to further adjust, uh, adjust for it. So knowing, knowing that the apps are, are driven by, uh, by their users, um, we're, we're, we're trying to sort of hunker down a little bit and protect the downtown and protect the neighborhoods and not try and shift, uh, shift the, the issue. Uh, we've also heard a lot from the downtown businesses that when we did the closure, um, we, we crippled the businesses, and, uh, and this will be an opportunity to allow them to take advantage of a somewhat captive audience and try, try and drive, drive those folks to, to their stores. Thank you. Vice Chair Hudis, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, to maybe one quick point on that mm -hmm. question, and this is, this is an issue that I raised um, on the Alberta Way project, is I'm concerned that changes that are being made to the traffic flow might invalidate some of the EIRs um, and uh, the, the TIAs that are coming with the EIRs um, with regard to uh, the way traffic flows. So um, when we do make structural changes, um, it's a concern that the EIR may lose validity. Um, in other words, it's, you know, it's, it's like a bridge being out um, type of a situation, so we'll have to look at that closely where, where those kinds of changes are being made. Um, I had one other brief comment in, on, the, um, on, on the overall program. And, you know, there, there, I didn't see a lot of things in here that were really land use that were planning commission. I appreciate the opportunity where this presented to us, but um, I, only indirectly I wanted to comment on a few things that really are indirect because we sometimes approve projects that cause additional uh, congestion and so I uh, very supportive of uh, projects 6305, 6103 and 6306 that are helping with disaster readiness and preparedness through uh, the radio interoperability, the EAOC communications upgrade and the neighborhood emergency preparedness. I think it's uh, terrific that we are putting resource behind these efforts to increase uh, disaster readiness and preparation and response. Thank you. Comment? And then I would share, share some of the, um, the credit on that one through the town manager's office and the police department, obviously the, the main leads on that program. And there were many, many folks who had uh, input on this uh, capital improvement program, including the finance department uh, that, that really helped put it together. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hansen. I just had a comment and then a question. Um, well, first of all, the, 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 the document was excellent. It was really easy to read through and understand the projects and what they meant and where the money was coming from and going to. And I did notice right away, having worked on this for many years uh, in other capacities, that um, we all of a sudden had more funding and I didn't realize where it came from. So thank you for saying that in your presentation. Um, I was also really happy to see that there was specific mention of some prior, long-time priorities for safe routes to school, such as putting the sidewalk on Shannon Road, um, which I remember being brought up like three or four years ago. Um, my question for you was about the bike and pedestrian master plan that was recently approved. And there was some mention of it in your document about you know projects kind of coming from that. Is there any specific project um, that's in the capital plan that comes out of the bike and pedestrian master plan? Yeah, great question. Yeah, and, and certainly the, we, we look to the bike and ped master plan and our Safe Routes to School study that we did as primary sources of projects. We have a great project that we're, we're looking to bring forward at Blossom Hill Road and Roberts Road East. Uh, where uh, just a, a ton of kids uh, come out of, uh, um, especially Fisher, and head down the, that sort of that hill on Blossom Hill Road. Uh, we did green bike lanes in, in our early pilot of green bike lanes on that street. 
uh, and we're looking to do some additional significant improvements, including sidewalk widening, uh, sort of a, a, a minor road diet in that area to make some adjustments and make it more friendly to younger riders. I think it works now for, for somebody who's, who's uh, ride, rides a bike sort of uh, uh, in, in spandex type of a thing, um, but not for the, for the younger riders who, who might be a, more, a little more challenged. So we're looking forward to big improvements there, and that's definitely out of the Bike and Ped Master Plan, as is the crossing of uh, the bridge across um, Blossom Hill Road and widening that and or, or an alternate ped crossing. Oh, and also the isn't the highway uh, nine connector to the, the trail? It, it's it, been another. It is, yeah, I yeah. think that one is okay. Good. We do yeah. feed quite a bit of projects into the capital improvement program from those that work. So the the master plans are essential to us in in providing us guidance on on uh, filling out our CIP over time. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Birch. A um, couple quick questions. Uh, do you have the timeline for your thoughts on the Blossom Hill? Very recently, I was driving my kids to high school and I noticed that when these kids are coming out of school in a pack mm -hmm. there'll be two or three of them in the road because they all want to walk together and then it was pushing the bicycles into the traffic to go around their friends which that's just kids but I was curious what your timeline was so the the construction at Blossom Hill Road and Roberts Road East sh uh, should happen it should start at least in this in this coming fiscal year uh, in terms of widening the, the the bridge, that that's a longer term project, so it's brand new now. We're we're probably looking a number of years out on on that project. Okay, um, and then another quick question about the traffic mitigation, because we all know we're going to get a lot of questions about this. It looks like last year we spent about a hundred thousand on the mitigation, and I know there was a lot of pilot programs. And this year our budget's just a little over half of that. Does that allow for any emergency closures, or if we see that over a holiday weekend there's a need? Yeah, the, the council gave us uh, some pretty good latitude in making adjustments on the fly as we need to. And so we'll definitely be watching throughout the course of the summer and making adjustments as we need to, uh, both between uh, Parks and Public Works and the police department out, out uh, in the field. And then I, my last question is um, I'm really excited about the bus study. Um, I can stop driving down Blossom Hill to take my kids to school. Um, if we're getting the feasibility study, I think you said in June, when you if it looks good when how fast would that pilot program be so we're we are currently planning two routes in january uh so halfway through the school year great uh, so it's a it's an aggressive aggressive schedule it relies on some funding elements coming together so that'll be part of the discussion that we have with uh with the council in june is are they in alignment with our with our plan and our funding and and what happens if some of the the outside funding doesn't come through that whole thing so uh, we're excited about it i think there's some great interest in there we ran into a little bit of uh, price sensitivity, and that's sort of the, the, the biggie on what we're, what we're working through now, and so that'll be the ongoing conversation. Right. Thanks. I have a couple of questions. Um, on the trial run for the one way, that would be North Santa Cruz heading south, and would you then have University heading north be one way? So our plan is to leave University at this point two way. Uh, although that may not be the ultimate solution if this is successful. So just the one-way south. The one-way, um, we, haven't, we haven't made the determination of south and north at this point. So we'll have that discussion as we, as we line it out. So there's arguments in favor of both. So if you make it one way headed north, you take away the opportunity for, you reduce the, um, the, the, the cut-through traffic opportunities. Oh. If you make it south, then uh, you take away the, um, the AM peak traffic that we experience. If you make it north, everybody's going to try to go south on university with one lane. That, that uh, may be the experience, yes. Okay. On page C36, you mentioned on uh, widening the longer turn lanes, uh, Shannon Road near the schools. <coughs> it made, made me think to extend the length of the left turn lane allows the cars to get in there. And we've mentioned in the past that on Los Gatos Boulevard, heading south, as you approach Almaden Los Gatos, or Los Gatos Almaden, um, there's a left left hand turn lane there. And that queue, oft, and during the peak hours in late afternoon, that queue comes out into the road so that the cars trying to turn left are now in the lanes that are headed due south, and it makes for some swerving and hazardous conditions. I don't think there's been any any harm in that so far. Um, but if we if we can lengthen one, we should look at that other queue. 
because when it comes out into the southbound lanes, it's, it's kind of risky. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Morley. Thank you. How long would that trial be, uh, north or south on Santa Cruz? How long do I have to leave town? <laughs> Um, so we, we'd like to, from a staff perspective, we'd like to run it for several months uh, to be able to really experience it. Um, but we have yet to had, have that conversation with the council, so we'll, we'll have to move Several months. Yeah. If you did do it, uh, would you consider 45 degree parking instead of parallel? Or is that parallel? I mean, you could get a lot more spaces of parking if you did do it. So there's a lot of ideas that could be incorporated, uh, parallel parking, sidewalk seating, um, bike lanes, um, a, a, whole, a whole slew of things that could be included in the project, yes. Thank you. Forgive me for digressing. We're, we're supposed to find that the CIP is consistent with the general plan, the North 40 specific, the Albright specific, and the Hillside specific. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion unless anyone sees a conflict with any of those. All right. Then I'll recommend to the town council that we've provided the opportunity. I haven't. Does any member of the public want to, want to speak to this item? Good. Then we've provided the opportunity to the public uh, to address this item. I find that the project is exempt pursuant to the adopted guidelines for the implementation of CEQA, section 15061B3. I find the potential projects in the 2018-19 to 22-23 draft proposal CIP are consistent with the general plan, North 40 specific plan, Albright specific plan, and the Hillside specific plan. And I recommend that we recommend to town council to approve the 2018-19, 2022-23 draft proposed CIP. Can I have a second? Commissioner Birch. I will second. Do we have discussion? My goodness, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Paulson, there are no appeal rights. What happens from here? Uh, from here, as part of the normal budgeting process, the capital improvement program will be considered by the council. And the, I think the tentative schedule currently is May 15th. They'll be considering the operating budget as well as capital budget. Thank you. I'll turn to uh, commission matters. And I have an item I wish to bring forward. Um, I want to point out that um, Vice Chair Hudis practically came here from the airport <laughs> after flying 72 hours from Asian countries all over the place and uh, dragged himself in here fully prepared. And he's quite a fellow. I'd have gone to bed. <laughs> Any other commis <laughs> Commissioner Birch? Did you fly in? <laughs> <laughs> Any other commission matters? Do we have a report from the Director of Community Development? Just briefly, uh, last week, Council um, had their normal, regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, at that meeting, they approved the Nick's Raw Bar restaurant that the Planning Commission uh, recommended. They also uh, approved the ordinance amendments, general plan amendments for the plan development ordinances that the Planning Commission also recommended approval of, so they approved that as well. Um, and then there was a third thing. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, general plan. We've received proposals for the general plan update, and so they also adopted a resolution which states the uh, parameters for selecting uh, up to five additional members to be added to the GPC to form the general plan advisory committee, which will be involved in the general plan update. Uh, and along with uh, that resolution, there was also some guiding principles to help guide that work as the general plan committee uh, moves through that process. Thank you, Mr. Paulson, and thank you, Mr. Morley, and thank you, Mr. Schultz. We have a comment. I had a question. Um, I watched the <laughs> town council meeting um, on the video, and um, I noticed that um, that um, council member Spector voted against the plan development ordinance, and the, and the reason that she gave was about the public benefit. And now we had the lengthy discussion about the public benefit issue, and we recommended to put a definition of the public benefit and as well as some examples. So, so did, was that incorporated in their motion to approve? And 
Because it, it was not. And so staff okay. in the staff report, if you take a look at it, that was one of the eight items that we actually carried forward um, asking for input or providing the input that the Planning Commission provided. Um, they chose not to further discuss that. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I sort of saw them there, but, you know, it kind of went fast. And so they so it's, it's, it's still an open item. So I totally understand the question then. Okay. Commissioners, thank you for your preparation and thank you for your work tonight. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.